Hey, welcome to Geek Toolkit. In this episode of Geek Toolkit, the geek tool I want to talk about is home automation. The software we're going to talk about is Hass.io, and Hass.io is a version of what's called Home Assistant. It adds on an add-on library, which makes it very easy to, to add modules, and it adds a web UI that makes it very easy to manage it. The thing about home automation is you can really do home automation these days in so many ways. It's so easy. Uh, you can have an Alexa and a smart bulb, and if the smart bulb's Alexa compatible, those things will link up and all of a sudden voice control works. It's pretty magical, and we've come really far in a really short amount of time to be able to do things like that. As a geek, there's still things I want to do that I can't do with Alexa yet. SIO allows me to add my own stuff or configure things the way I want, and I can make a home automation setup that is much smarter than what I would normally be able to get. For instance, my DynaFrame project, which allows me to show different pictures on the monitors, I can actually set that up so that when I walk into the room, it shows pictures that I care about. That's a really cool magical experience, and it's something that you just can't normally do without super expensive software um, or writing something custom. But Hass.io, I found, makes it very, very easy to do scenarios like that. I'm gonna make some assumptions, and if you don't know these things, don't worry. I'll link to them in the comments below. One of the assumptions is that you know how to download and install and run a program called Etcher. The other thing that I'm gonna ask that you know, what's called USB booting. What this means is, if you don't have a micro SD card in the Raspberry Pi, and you turn it on, it will use the USB ports to actually boot the OS. Once you're there, then we should be able to continue with this tutorial. I'll talk about how to set up VNC, and we'll talk about setting up static IPs, and then we're gonna talk about setting up Hass.io. So, here we go. This is our Raspberry Pi desktop. One of the first things you'll wanna do when you've booted Raspbian and you see this, is you'll wanna go down to Preferences, and then Raspberry Pi Configuration. This will give you a user interface for turning on some things that are very important. Under interfaces, I recommend turning on VNC and SSH. What these will allow you to do is remotely administrate this machine. It's very easy then to do things like copy the URLs out of this YouTube video or out of any help files and paste them into the device itself. One of the URLs that I've linked to is this one right here. This is the GitHub page for Home Assistant. And it has the Hass.io installer uh, project in here. At the bottom is this command line. And then you can see that you can pass it a dash M for machine. And then these are the different machines. The reason I explain that is if you wanna do this on a not Raspberry Pi or if you hit any issues, this will be the main page that you would use to debug this. We're going to take this command here, this serial command, and if you click on the little terminal window here, you'll get a new terminal, and then you can paste that command in. The serial command will take whatever it finds on that web page and download it. The dash SL, the dash S means silent. The L means follow any redirects that you hit. What it'll do is take this page, which is install.sh, which is what's called a shell script, and then it will pipe it to bash. So basically, bash will execute this and then pass any parameters that are after these double hyphens to the shell script. So when you run this, you're actually running code off the internet. Just be aware of that, and I just wanted you to know what you're doing. So I'm gonna hit enter, and it will go through and run this. Now, ah, uh, I guess one thing I should mention is you're probably gonna wanna run it elevated, so you'd wanna run sudo in front of it. So we'll just do sudo. sudo super user do means run this with elevated permissions. When you're done doing this, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna find out your IP address and one way I've, I've done that, so I'm going to open a new, a new window, is you can do an ifconfig-a. 
And this will show you a bunch of basically spew for all the IP addresses to any internet adapters that you have on the device. Now there's a lot here, but the thing I find is most things have a 192 starting address. So if we pipe this to grep, which is a search for Linux, and then do 192 dot, oh, let's do if config, get rid of a, and then, oh, <laughs> let's make sure we have the nine there, one, not 102, there we go. Then we can see that this first result here, 192.168.1.2, this is my IP address for this machine. This is important because the way we manage Home Assistant is we navigate to that address and then we add a colon 8123 to the end of it. When you first do this, you'll get a dialogue saying that you have to wait 20 minutes. The reason being is Home Assistant has to update itself and that's okay, give it its 20 minutes, come back and navigate back to that page and you should see a login screen. From here on out, we should be able to administrate this from any other machine on our local network. I don't wanna to go too deep into the setup, but I wanna give you guys a quick walkthrough. Now that we've got the web UI pointing to our HASIO instance, I'm gonna do this on the Raspberry Pi through VNC, but you can do this on any web browser on your network. The first page that you'll get here actually has you set up your account with your username and password. It also sets up location and such. I've already gone through that, so just follow that wizard. The nice thing about the location is it will automatically set up some things for you, such as your, sun, your sunrise and sunset, or in this case, it set up my weather for me. This is the page I'll greet you when you log in. You can save the login and then just basically, I'll bookmark this page typically which is really nice because then I click on it and I get my dashboard. Up here, you'll see things like presence information and some quick uh, widgets. The presence information can be set up against a couple of different technologies, which is really handy. What I like about this is I can set it up for myself, my wife, and then if one of us are home, we can see it trigger who's home. And the cool thing about that is you can have different scenes based on who's at home. This area here is the sidebar, and this is kind of your your quick view for things. This has IO button is very important. This is kind of the quote unquote store. So this is an add on I have already called configurator. And this add on store will show me other add ons that are available. I've already gone through the configurator add on, but let's do Samba so I can show you what that looks like. Samba share. Here we go. So I click on it and it gives me the GitHub page, which is really handy. I can get how to use the configuration and install. This install button here takes care of it. This is how to set up Samba via Hasio, and it's one of the reasons I love this so much. It's much, much simpler than going through Linux and editing the config files. I can also set up this add-on to auto update, which is really nice, keeps things secure. If there's any bugs or security exploits though it can also cause uh, configuration issues or if it ends up updating and breaking something, which has happened. So keep that in mind. Down here, it shows the sample configuration. And the log will, you'll have to hit refresh to get the log to show. It doesn't auto update. So here's my, my config and I can see right now that Hasio is a username and there's no password, which I'm gonna wanna change. So. Let's change this to, well, we'll just change it to my defaults right now. I can always change this later, but for this tutorial, just to give you an idea. And what I'll do is go to the top here and I've set up my config and I'll say start. The progress bar color cycle through. I used to think that red meant something bad had happened, but it doesn't. So now Samba has started on the machine and this allows me to get to network shares on the machine, which is really nice. I can double check my config, make sure everything's okay here. And I will navigate to that in a different window. So let's see, here is the network share 192.168.1.2. And there is my Samba shares. There's everything shared out. 
and in the config file are my yet another markup languages, these YAMLs. This is how the configuration is done normally. You would open up a configuration file and then you would edit this. And this is a, uh, if you're not familiar with YAML, it's kind of like a human readable version of JSON. It's just a way of putting things in here to configure uh, your home assistant. I'm gonna show you other ways to do that in other videos that are much simpler. The Sama share is really nice to be able to get to those files, but I use a thing called configurator so I can do it in the browser. I wanna show that, that because it's the other thing I set up right immediately once I get this thing up and running is setting up configurator. Configurator gets installed on the add-on store just like the Samba share does. And one thing I wanna note is this show in sidebar, if you select that, then you start customizing your sidebar. So now I have one click access to configurator. If I click on the configurator in the sidebar, you can see that it loads up the configuration file. And if I click on this folder icon, I can select different files that I wanna load up. Now you might ask, why would I install configurator to edit things in the browser and install Samba? Here's the main reason. And this is based on experience. When you edit your configuration file, which you can do often as you add things to this, you have to restart Home Assistant. You do this by clicking on has.io, clicking on system, and then you can do um, reboot right, right here. That will load up the new config file. The problem is you're on a web UI. You're, you're basically on a web page. If the Raspberry Pi reboots and that configuration is corrupt, the entire system doesn't boot as far as Home Assistant. The Raspberry Pi will boot, the OS will boot, but Home Assistant won't. To fix this, you can go to your IP address slash config, open up the configuration file, and then edit it here and try to fix whatever you corrupted. The other thing you can do is you can load the log file and look through the log and try to find out what went wrong. So the log and fixing configuration files is why I enable Samba on every install I do. But the configuration and the ability to edit in the browser and the tools that it gives you are why I install Configurator. That's all I want to do for this video. In the next videos, I'll talk about things like adding Z-Wave or configuring devices, and we can work on Alexa integration and stuff like that. But for now, hopefully this video was a very quick and easy way to show you how to get set up and also to give you an idea of what it's like to actually administer the system. Thanks for watching, and until next time, I'm Joe Farrow with Geek Toolkit.